to start, but uh, I, uh, I'm Bill Meacham, and we have here Evelyn Wanderum, Minnesota Fats' first wife of how many years? Forty-four. Forty-four years. And what year did you? Uh, Forty-one. You met in forty. You met in forty-one. Uh, I knew him exactly two months. I met him on the seventh of March, and we were married on the seventh of May. Where did you meet him, though? That's what I want to know. Here in New Coin, right here. Oh, you did? Yeah. <clears throat> I thought he was from New York. He is. He was. Because I heard he had a pool room out in New York years ago, in Anacosta. Uh, and that was Washington, D.C. Was that D.C.? Uh-huh. Three tables. Did you ever see that room? No. You never did? But he had one out there. I'm always like, I was thinking about when uh, I was... He, he told me a lot about that room, and uh, I don't know the name of the street that it was on. However, he had it during the years of uh, Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, mm -hmm. and Roosevelt used to ride around in an open uh, limousine to uh, wave to his public. And never failed to come past Fats's uh, pool room, and of course everybody went out on the sidewalk to see the president go by. <laughs> and uh, Fats told me lots of details, but uh, one he told me, you have a a recorder going now? Yeah, I was just changing out the wind buffer. Okay. <laughs> uh, he re made re one remark about the president. He said he had the biggest head on it that he had ever seen on a human. It was a big, big head. <laughs> Did he make any comment to that? Anything more than that? Yeah, they don't come to me just now. But, yeah. uh, well, if they do, let us know. Yeah. But well, he made comments about every subject that came up. And some of them you could repeat, some you couldn't. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the way he was. Where did you two first meet? Where did you did, uh, did he meet you or did you meet him or how did that how did that happen? Just one of those things. Um, he had attended a, a pool tournament that was at least six weeks in duration or possibly longer in Chicago, and there was a was a it friend, at Bensinger's? At Bensinger's. Was it? Okay. A big room that. Uh, yeah, downstairs. Oh well, they had two or three floors. If I'm was not mistaken. Was it? Okay, maybe Floating back then they did. I saw years. in the later years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there was uh, a friend of Fats and his wife from D.C. Earl Shriver and his wife Ada, and a little boy, Phil. And uh, then there was Jimmy the Greek. Not the Greek we know about uh, from Vegas, and yeah. a different Jimmy the Greek mm -hmm. from New York City. They were all with Vance most of this time that he spent in Chicago at this tournament. So the way I understand, Vance tells me that in that tournament there were uh, 100, I believe 56, 150 some games played, tournament games. And Fats picked all but two of the winners in in all of those games, <laughs> and more or less uh, made book, you know, the, yeah. everybody in the room bet into Fats. The Greek probably couldn't have done it that good, huh? No, no, <laughs> the real Greek couldn't. Have. Really? <laughs> so, uh, and you're going to have yourself a hell of a story here <laughs> if you got time to take it all down. So. Uh, that tournament was finally fizzled out and was all over with. So, uh... What games did they play? Do you remember? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, really, uh... Why were you there? I wasn't there. Okay. I never had met him at this time. It's just before our meeting. Okay. So they were dead tired from being up day and night. Yeah. And, uh... So all of them, in two cars, Fats had a brand new, uh... LaSalle. Uh -huh. It was the last LaSalle that was built. Mm -hmm. And 
it was as pretty beautiful car as they make today, it seemed to me. Right. It was just beautiful. And uh, this other couple had a new Buick of some kind. So they're traveling, they left Chicago en route to Hot Springs, Arkansas to go down for some R&R. &R. Was that where they had the Oakland races? Yeah, the that Oakland all, racetrack is I there. where all the gamblers used to go. Right, and during the early... Almost kind of like an early Johnson City kind of like right, that together, wasn't right. it? Right, There was a pool hustlers gathering there every spring for many years. So, uh, but this was even before that time. Oh, really? This was in the... Well, this is what year, 19 what? Uh, 41. 41, okay. So, uh, they're traveling south on this Highway 51 that you just got through driving. Uh-huh. And uh, fast skid on slick pavement just before we driving into DuCoin. And he banged it scratched this new car on a mailbox at the side of the highway. Mm -hmm. So they drove into DuCoin to see about repairing this car. So uh, they got taken care of for that part. And they inquired, is there a pool room? And they said yes. And they were directed to Louis Reed's pool room, which is on the main street here in town. And when they went in there, uh, half of the people in there knew them, and uh, Fats and his friends more or less recognized some of these people. Mm -hmm. What had happened, this was such a big uh, publicized pool tournament in Chicago. There were lots of pool players and pool enthusiasts here in DuCoin. They had been to Chicago to see some of those games. Oh, okay. And had gambled. Uh, some big gamblers come from this area. Right. Would bet lots and lots of money, so they had bet Fats. And of course, I imagine they picked losers because Fats only booked two, two losers out of all of that. Well, they had, uh, were surprised that they met the way they did. So they matched a game, which takes a long time among those players. It takes hours, you know, to uh, match the game and uh, the money. You know, they might be odds on the money and odds on the game itself. Well, a lot of times the game is won and lost, those hours spent before the game, as That's you know. That's right, you uh, of course. <laughs> so uh, they finally <clears throat> went to the table the first game for $900. Uh -huh. And uh, they played, of course, Fats won. Oh, you're there watching this, right? No, no. Okay. I come along, it's a week before I enter the picture. So they played, you might say, day and night. Uh -huh. There's a little hotel just around the corner from where the schoolroom was. And I don't know when they ever decided that, to go to bed, but <laughs> that's where they checked in, in that hotel that was real close. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, uh, of course, the money in this game got bigger and bigger. Do you know who he was playing? Yeah, he was playing uh, one of the best players in this area, which happened to be a rounder and a hustler, just like Fats. I don't know what part of the world he was from. You don't know his name? Uh, I can't think of it just now. Okay, well, if you do. But he had been here a good long time, and uh, he married a Ducoin girl. Uh huh. So uh, and raised a family here. So you might call this his home. His name was Don something, and uh, Don Willis. No. No. So. Uh, Finally, uh, Fats, of course, was a big eater, and uh, there were two or three restaurants convenient and close to uh, this pool room, and he would take a few minutes to run across the street or next door to a restaurant to eat. He didn't have time to go have a decent meal, I suppose he thought. So I... Too much action. 
He didn't want yeah, to miss out. Yeah, he didn't want to kill a minute away from the pool room. <laughs> so I worked as a waitress in um, a nightclub down the road just two or three miles from this pool room. What was it like a dance club, like liquor and... Yeah, the, uh, liquor and a small dance floor. Mm -hmm. And they served some food, fried chicken and barbecue. And uh, Probably only on the weekends? No, every night. Did they? Uh, there was no <coughs> closing for weekends. I think they were open during the weekend. Do you remember the name of the club? Uh, yeah, the Evening Star. The Evening Star, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I was one waitress, and there was a, another waitress by the name of Irene, and uh, unless we knew we were going to be unusually busy, we were the only two waitresses that, that ever worked there. So, <clears throat> I had a night off, and they came to this place far to eat and um, so I miss seeing them so when I went back to work the next night uh, they said and they had talked the uh, Joe Scofick and Muzz the owners of this place where I worked the evening star they said boy Evelyn they had talked about the big gamblers in town uh, all week long there had been mention of these big gamblers being in town so uh, when I went back to work on Tuesday night, I had Monday night off, why uh, they said, well, Evelyn, you missed it last night. Those gamblers came down for dinner and dining here. So uh, were they, they tipping heavy? Is that what they were talking about? You know, yeah, they, they tipped big. Yeah. <laughs> $5 bills and uh, big, big deal. Yeah. So uh, well, you were upset because you missed out, weren't you? Yeah, and yeah. just to to see the action and to hear about it was big, uh -huh. and it truly was. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, back in those days. Yeah. A five dollar tip was. Yeah, but then they're talking about these big games where they pay and playing twenty five hundred dollars a a game and uh, like that. That's big, smart conversation, you know. Yes. <laughs> so even uh, nowadays it it'll raise a few eyebrows. Right. Well. Uh, I long the evening wears on and uh, this is Tuesday right yeah Tuesday and uh, in they come again for Tuesday and night. you're there and I'm there and uh, Pat had a girl with him a real young little girl I was 22 I guess 22 and uh, when you're saying young girl this girl's probably what 16 about 17 17 and she worked in one of these restaurants that he'd been going into mm -hmm. uh, up here by the pool room. Mm -hmm. And he uh, had her with him for dinner. And she, during the time that he played pool, if she wanted to drive around in his car, he allowed that. So she really was flying, you know, for a 17 year old. Well, yeah, brand new car and decoy. Right. What color was the car? You remember? Uh, it was a dark color. I was think. it probably black and maybe dark blue? Well, ah, uh, so I was their waitress, and I served them. Now I want to tell you something about the chicken. There was uh, a chef. We'll call him. His name was Ed King. And uh, he made good, very good fried chicken, or fried chicken. And uh, France loved it. He never had eaten chicken ever in his life so good. And he told that Ed King that, and he told everyone this is the best chicken ever had. So uh, he told me many a uh, good long time later he's still eating lots of chicken when I had an opportunity to cook for him he always wanted me to cook chicken fried chicken 
So he told me that... Uh, that was his favorite meal at home, fried chicken? Right. Mm -hmm. So he told me that uh, having been brought up in New York City, uh, he had had chicken a lot at his home and in restaurants, but he said he thought that chicken was naturally supposed to taste like it was half rotten. <laughs> because, <laughs> because that was the days before a good refrigeration. Yeah. And uh, the, they kept chicken or any food until uh, they sold it, regardless of the timing of it. You know? Yeah, hanging on the line, so to speak. Right. Yeah, just like aged beef. So, uh, anyway, he had this little young lady with him, and uh, he couldn't make it very obvious, but he uh, would come to where I was, up in my nurse's, uh, not nurse's station, but waitress station. He liked the older gals, didn't he? Yeah, he liked me <laughs> uh, on sight. So uh, he asked me about... Uh, now, this is the first, first words he ever spoke to you, what you're going to tell me? Yeah. Well, uh, the ordering of the food and things Other like than that. that but, yeah. But he came to me and uh, asked me about going out with him. That night, I think, he asked me. I guess he thought he'd get rid of Ruthie. You know, Ruthie would go on home, and he'd double back. I had to work, I think, until 11, and he thought he would double back and pick me up. And uh, I says, oh, I couldn't tonight. I said, I'm not dressed, but uh, there was no place to go anyway. I didn't have to be dressed, you know, but I was silly and mm -hmm. uh, surprised. and. So I told him, I said, no, I couldn't go tonight, but I could tomorrow night. And he said, okay, that he would see me when I got off work the next night. So the next night, come 11 o'clock or whatever the timing was, uh, he didn't come to pick me up at work. Uh, the Greek, his friend, came to pick me up. So as we drove this mile or so back to town uh, to where France was, uh, the Greek, he had designs on me too. So he parked, we got to Ducoin, and he parked in front of the theater, which was down the street a couple blocks from where France was. He parked in front of this theater, and uh, like uh, said, what could he and I do, you know? Mm -hmm. Would I go out with him? And I said, uh, well, I dated up with a fence tonight. And uh, so anyway, I refused. And uh, so he took me on then to where Fats was. And Fats was in front of the pool room, standing out on the sidewalk, waiting for us to come driving up. So. The Greek got out of the car and, uh, oh, and the Greek and I both got out of the car. Fats said, honey, would you like to have something to eat? And I said, yeah. And uh, so we went to one of these restaurants that was real close. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they said, would you like to have a steak? And uh, I said, yes. And the way it turned out, they didn't order any food, neither of them. And we were sitting in a big booth, <laughs> and they both sat on one side of the booth, and me over here by myself. Beaten. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, they, uh, oh, they fired the questions at me just as fast as I could answer. And this steak they brought, it was about uh, a quarter of an inch thick. <laughs> and uh, it covered a big dinner platter, one of those real big size yeah. platters. It just covered it all over, just like a sheet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they said, would, a fat said, honey, you want me to cut your steak for you? And I said, yeah. And he cut it into little bites. And so I sat there, and as I'd take a bite, I'd look down to put my fork in the bite. 
and I'd come up and put it in my mouth, and their heads would go, they'd watch every move I made, <laughs> up and down. Kind of like, like two dogs at the dinner table watching you want to, want to scrap or something, huh? Right, right. <laughs> so, uh... What were you thinking about then? What were you thinking uh, about? I tell you, I thought I was in into something big. <laughs> so finally we got rid of the Greek. <coughs> And I don't know, see, by this time, it must have been midnight. So there was no place to go. And I think that, uh, that we went straight to Carbondale, to a motel, not a motel, but a hotel. Mm -hmm. An old hotel there that, uh, well, there wasn't any better hotel there, but it was an old timer. Mm -hmm. And I uh, checked in, and I guess it's man and wife. And, uh, well, you, you know the rest of that story. <laughs> and uh, so I had a date with him for the next night, and the next, and the next. And that went on. I saw him every night for. Uh, well, the, that was the 7th of May that that happened. No, that was the 7th of March that I had my first date with him. And then we were married on the 7th of May. Now, I had known him just two weeks. And uh, we're at this perfection, uh, at the, the eatery, the this nightclub, the Evening Star. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Oh, he had me quit my job right away. But he wanted me to be wherever he was, be with him. Mm -hmm. So uh, he had a phone call. It was almost 11 o'clock at night. And the phone rang in this Evening Star and it was for him, Rudolph Wanderone. And uh, it was his family, oh, his family in New York City had sent a wire, a Western Union, to this area, I, like a death message it was. It wasn't, mm -hmm. his sister wasn't dead then, but she was dying. His sister was a sickly person, uh, a little bit older than he was. And uh, she had a respiratory, bad respiratory problem. And uh, she had surgery. It was a must that she have the surgery, but to have it may have uh, cured her or helped her a lot. Yeah. And it, but it was still kill or cure. Uh, she would have to, it would be one way or the other. Yeah, she had to. Go for it, and whatever it came, right. whatever the outcome was, yeah. So uh, that that wire was uh, get in touch with the family because Rosalie was uh, had had surgery and she wasn't maybe expected to live. Yeah. So uh, he called New York right there and then, and uh, they told him that uh, sure enough, Rosie had had. Uh, the surgery, and uh, it was just a matter of time, it seemed, that they didn't think she was going to live. Yeah. So, uh, how did he, he take that? He cried like a baby, out loud, boo, hoo, 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 just yeah. as loud as he could. Fats cried like a kid, like a two year old, if we went to a movie. And it was got a little sad. Uh, he mm -hmm. got weepy in a movie, so he really let it out. Rosie was his pride and joy. He was that? Well, that is his only sister, or did he no, have other brothers? No, he had. Uh, he had two sisters. He had Rosie and Julie <coughs> as stepsisters, sisters, and then uh, there's this is another story in here. Uh, 
it's a strange story. Their last name, Fats' mother was married to a man by the name of Graf, G-R-A-F. And my name before I was married to Fats was G-R-A-F-F. -F. So, uh, that's another story that I'll tell you later. And where was I? Well, we had Rosie and... and oh, two, so... Uh, two stepsisters, Rosie he, uh, and... turned from the phone, crying till he could hardly talk. And he finally said, my sister is dying in New York City. Evelyn, will you go with me to New York City? And I said, well, I'll have to get permission. Now, I'm 22 years old, mm -hmm. but I still do, uh, as I'm told, you by my mother. Mm -hmm. So it's 11 o'clock at night, and he takes me to Dow, this little town down here. And uh, my mother gets out of bed, and uh, she said yes, that I could uh, go since... Uh, since uh, it was for something like that, a death in the family, or sickness, that she gave her, per her permission. So uh, we left right then. I threw some things into a bag, and uh, we left and started our trip, and we drove as far as uh, Indianapolis, which is like 300 miles from here. Mm -hmm. And we stopped to sleep a little while. And uh, early the next morning, after just sleeping a very a short time, uh, he called New York, and his sister had, sure enough, passed away. Mm -hmm. So we drove on into uh, New York that day, and uh, we spent about uh, two weeks. We spent several days, of course, at his mother's home, and I stayed in the home with them. Uh, Back then, though, that was kind of, I mean, unusual, wasn't it? Back in those days, to have a woman with you and staying in your home. Um, I believe it was. <coughs> yeah. But uh, they didn't. Uh, they didn't think necessarily like we did. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Fats didn't invite me to go to the funeral or right. anything. Uh, he was so broken up and yeah. everything. Uh, but I become acquainted with all of his family. And uh, we spent several days there and left and stopped in Philadelphia, which is only 90 miles from New York to Philly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we always in and out of New York often never failed to stop in Philadelphia because we had as many friends in Philly as in New York City. So, uh, all together, this trip to New York took about two weeks. So we came back to uh, DuCoin and uh, we're seeing each other day and night. And uh, by this time, <coughs> Fats and the Greek, I don't know. Uh, well, the Greek didn't go with you to New York No, City. he didn't go to yeah. New York. He stayed here. Yeah. He played some cool himself. Yeah. And he played good, but he was, uh, well, he was cagey with his game. He played better than he let it be known. Yeah. And he slipped up on a lot of people. So, uh, Anyway, by this time they decided that they wanted to go back to Chicago rather than go on to Hot Springs. Mm -hmm. They were just going to Hot Springs to recoup and uh, uh, bathe in those uh, mineral baths and uh, go on a health kick. Yeah. So they decided that they wanted to go back to Chicago. So Fats asked me would I go with them. And the Greek <laughs> By this time, he had started an affair with Irene, the girl that I worked with. And uh, he asked her, and she said, yeah, she'd go. 
But I told Fats I could go till I asked my mother. <laughs> so I went like 11 o'clock at night to ask my mother how about going to Chicago. Well, she's Fats. probably asleep, isn't she, at this time? Yeah, always. <laughs> and uh, she said, no. She said, when you went to New York with the Fats, she said you had excuse enough. But I don't see that you have any excuse, and I wouldn't want you to go on to Chicago with fans. She didn't tell you you couldn't go, she just said she didn't want you to go. Right. Yeah, and that, yeah I was kind of diplomat. Yeah. So, uh, she walked out of the room, went back to bed, I guess, and uh, Fats says, well, maybe you want to get married? That, that's the way you proposed to me. <laughs> well, do you want to get married? <laughs> and I said, well, if I go with you, uh, I guess I'll have to. <laughs> so this is Friday night. 11 o'clock. Yeah. And uh, so he stayed overnight at my house, slept on the couch. And uh, I sneaked out of bed real early and went to get a hairdo and got back before he woke up. And uh, we got up and hit the road. <coughs> and this. You didn't tell your mom goodbye? Uh, I, I don't remember. I don't. I think that I did. Mm -hmm. Told her that we were going to. Oh, get it was a married. pretty exciting day, wasn't oh, it? Well, we weren't <laughs> taken off to go to Chicago right then. Yeah. We were taken off to go get married. Yeah, to go down and see the Justice yeah. of the Peace. To do what? See the Justice of the Peace. Right. Or the preacher or whatever, yeah. Right. So, uh, this was back in the years when they first started to have to have uh, some kind of a uh, test. You had to have a blood test. Blood test. And uh, a doctor's signature of uh, pretty clean health before you could uh, get an okay. So uh, that law was already in effect in Illinois. Mm -hmm. But I knew from having heard conversation, uh, everybody was going to Missouri because they didn't have that waiting time in Missouri. Mm -hmm. this, the law hadn't passed there. Right. So I related all this to the fat man, and we went to Missouri. And uh, what was his nickname at the time you met him? He wasn't called. Was he? What did they call him? New York Fats. Did they just call him Fats? And then okay. they got to be uh, Double Smart Fats. He pulled a, a good one, and they called him Double Smart. And then he got to be Triple Smart. <laughs> and finally, after years, uh, he had a bad day, and they called him just plain Fats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all. So I'm driving to Missouri. Yeah. It's only what about an hour, hour and a half from here. Yeah, it's just yeah. 67 miles. Yeah. And uh, just across the river, Cape Girardeau. Right. And uh, so uh, we pass a horse book, and uh, and he could hear pool balls click mm -hmm. from here to, uh, well, 10 miles away, I guess he could hear. He, I've known him in cities. To stand on the corner and see if he could uh, see if he could hear. Hear the balls clicking. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you go over there. Over there. <laughs> so uh, he says, Evelyn. He uh, oh, it was Saturday afternoon now, and it's very crowded. It's a country town, and uh, he says, uh, I want to go in this pool room. And so drive around the block and pick me up. This is before you got married. Yeah. So, uh, as he got out of the car, he says, Oh, Evelyn, uh, up here on the second floor is a justice of peace. He says, I'll go up there and see what I can do. You know, about the getting married part. So, I drove around the block. And uh, when I got back to the meeting place, he says, Evelyn, park the car and come on up. So uh, I drove and drove and drove like to never have found a parking place. And uh, 
we went up and this man's office, this JP's office, his name was Gus Schultz. Uh, that name you never forget, you know. <laughs> and it was in an office on like the landing uh, where the stairs okay. change. <laughs> it was the smallest <laughs> office I was ever in. So uh, he had us fill out a form, I guess like a license, and uh, he told us to go and be gone 20 minutes and come back and he would marry us. So uh, we went downstairs and had a, a ice cream soda and uh, Fats is watching the time. We went back upstairs and Gus Shields, he didn't ask for any kind of witness or anything. He just said a few words and uh, a prayer, which was phony if you ever heard one. And all the time he's saying this prayer, he's looking at Fats. Fats is digging in his pocket to uh, <laughs> get the money ready. Does he know who Fats is at the time or not? No? Okay. And, uh, and Fats knew that he was watching him. Oh, and, of course. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, that's burglar slipping up on burglar, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the ceremony was over, and Fats ran down the stairs about halfway down, and uh, I said something about I thought that the bride always got a kiss when they were first married. Oh, he said, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, so I caught up with him, and he gave me a kiss. And uh, so we're almost downstairs. Anyway, he ran on downstairs, and uh, that was the beginning of our marriage. And I was always just about that far behind, you know, just oh, yeah. <laughs> just easing along. Hard man to keep uh, to stay, in, uh, I guess, in pace with or to keep up with. Oh yeah, yeah. Where did he get all his energy from? Was it anybody in his family you can remember of that had like his energy, like his father or mother or anybody that I really? I think his father. Really? What did his father do? His father, uh, both parents came from Switzerland to uh -huh. begin with. And his father was a would-be gambler. He gambled. Like cards, horses, or? Cards, and uh, no, I don't think horses. He liked wrestling. He was a strong man. And they bet on Sundays. And uh, in New York City, all the foreigners that came from that part of Switzerland uh -huh. and those countries all, all together the over there, countries, yeah. uh, they all gathered in New York City. And uh, uh, they showed their strength. And they would stand still and stand big and muscular and hold their breath and let uh, some strong big fool uh, hit them with all their might in the stomach or in the chest. Uh -huh. That says uh, they take a Sunday on somebody, you know. <laughs> Did you ever hear that expression? Uh, yeah, but what does it mean? Well, uh, take your best shot. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's so yeah. that if I took a Sunday on you, You'd, you'd stand and sort of brace yourself for him. For the best you got. Yeah, yeah and I'd lay it on you. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, bet on this, right? Yeah. <laughs> and another thing that he liked, he had been... What was his father's name? You remember? Rudolph. Okay. Wanderer. So his father, name. okay. And he always spelled his name without the E on the end. Rosalie, this sister, uh, added that E. Her name was really Graf, mm -hmm. but uh, with one F. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Now, so he bet on the oh, uh, on that punching thing, and then, then yeah. what was the next thing that he liked to bet Why on? He uh, was Fats with him when it was Fats. Did he go with him when he, when his father was doing this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I got to tell you this because I forget it. 
I don't know, uh, there's no use turning off the machine, but it isn't very nice when I'm on a date. The old man thought that there was nobody like Fats, you know. Fats was a little bitty kid, and I'll try to show you his picture later. I got one picture of him where he's uh, two or three years old, and he looks like a little urchin if there ever was one. <laughs> um, Fats said that there was always gatherings on the street corners, uh, political and otherwise, in New York City. Mm -hmm. So uh, his dad didn't care nothing about the gathering or the speaking, but he liked to get in this crowded place with Fats by the hand, and they get in just the right position. And uh, Fats and Dan would get up next to a, a woman he didn't like the looks of. He, he liked women, mm -hmm. but he didn't like the looks of some of them. Mm -hmm. And he'd tell Fats, it's all her. <laughs> <laughs> and Fats was just a little bitty kid, and he'd haul out and peel this woman's leg. Where did, he where, did he, where did he tell you that, or did Fats tell you that, or did his dad tell you that? Fats told me. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, compared to what they do nowadays, that's nothing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, man, uh, that's kind of To be that, yeah. though, you'd have to be going some. Yeah, back then. But his uh, dad, in those foreign countries, I started to tell you, uh, Every young man, the way I understand, had to do a certain period of time of military service mm -hmm. to be at least half trained in case that war sprung up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his dad liked that. He liked the military life, and he was a, a mercenary. Uh, or a soldier of fortune mm -hmm. uh, part of the time before he ever came to this country. And he liked that. And he had had experience of going to sea. He was a sailor, a would-be sailor. I don't know if he just hired on as a help of some kind or what, but uh, anyway, he knew that he liked being a sailor, and uh, did Fats like the water too? Yeah, right. and his fat took him with him. His father took him with him. Yeah, on different trips after the old man was married to Fats's mother. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, his father still continued to hire on to freighters in New York City that went always to uh, Germany and Switzerland and all of those countries, uh, France and... Fats was with him all the time? No, okay. just two or three trips. But he did go overseas then with him, huh? On yeah. The boats? yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there was and, a lot of gambling and stuff on the boats. You know, the long hours in the boats. Right, a lot of right. Poker and and uh, lots of eating fats set in those deck chairs and uh, he knew what time they passed out food. You know, they feed you a dozen times a day on the boat, yeah. and uh, and when he knew it was time that they were going to pass out food, he'd run and get in the deck chair <laughs> so that he'd be sick. He did have a passion for food, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh... I imagine when he went on one of them long journeys when he got back, he was probably a lot bigger each time, wouldn't he? Oh, he was as big as he could get any, any time of the year because his mother stuffed him, <laughs> and so did his dad. And, uh, well, he was a pampered uh, kid, but he didn't get by with uh, a lot of foolishness. His dad was strict in a way. I don't know what he had for fats to do in the way of chores, but uh, anyway, whatever it was, uh, it had to be mm -hmm. the way the old man said. Right. What he said was it. Right. So the old man would hire on these boats, and uh, when you go 
on one of that kind of boat, why, you might be gone two or three months. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's the way it was. Uh, that uh, is the story about his family. I don't remember right now much more to tell you about that. Yeah. He. Uh, but he was like his dad a lot. He picked up a lot of his dad's, because he sounds like he hung around with his dad a lot in a lot of different situations. Yeah. Now, his mother and dad had a divorce pretty early in life, uh, or in their married life. They hadn't lived together an awful long time. I'd say that that's... And then he remarried, and he remarried, right? His father remarried later on? No. No, no he had an Italian girlfriend. Oh, okay. And he lived... Uh, on the other side of the Hudson, through the Highland Tunnel, uh, lived in Hoboken, I, I think it was, with an Italian girlfriend, and lived with her always until the time of his death. Yeah. And uh, remind me to tell you, how come you're comparing it? No, I'm not. I pressed my button. I wasn't sure oh. what I was doing. <laughs> it was a beeping. Oh wow. Uh, Remind me to tell you about his father's death before I quit. Okay. <coughs> you want to take a break for a minute? Very simple little document, just mm -hmm. the very... The one from Missouri? Yeah. <coughs> very necessary things, that's all that had on it. She looked at it real good, turned it over, and there was nothing on the other side. She handed it back and, and waved her hand like this. <laughs> Says it's a phony. <laughs> so. Was she right? No, she, she wasn't didn't. right. All right. But there's a reason. Yeah. According to France, that uh, she said that. Vance lived with a girl by the name of Lucy for six years before he met me from uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Now, he was how many years older than you? He was about five years older. Okay. And uh, he and Lucy went someplace, probably right there in New York City, and uh, in some arcade of some kind, they made up phony headlines on newspapers. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. <coughs> And they had a, uh, they had one made up with <coughs> uh, Rudolph Wanderone and Lucille did so and so something big, you know. Mm -hmm. And they took it home to Fats's mother, and she was foreign and believed anything in the world that Fats told her. <laughs> and uh, whatever it was written on there, she went far believed it and that is what they excused theirself when she said my marriage license was a phony she, they said well she'd been fooled by that phony newspaper that they had made up and that's why she thought it was a phony mm -hmm. <laughs> and she and I never did G too well not necessarily uh -huh. because of that because I can forgive and forget pretty good but uh, she was a she was a conniving old bat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, did you have any children? Did you have any children? No. I think you I mentioned never, you, you never ever did. had a pregnancy. Did you try to get? Did you uh, try to have children? No. No. Okay. Uh, that's a, a long story in itself. Yeah, but you knew you didn't. You just didn't want to have children. Uh, okay. And, had uh, I had children? Did uh, it upset either of you two? That you didn't have any children? Okay. And, uh, but you love kids. I, uh. Or was it Fats that loved kids? If you like somebody else's kids, and I, you might describe me the same way. Yeah. Uh, we never were around children day after day. You know, we didn't know what it was to be around babies. Yeah. Yeah. What about that pool room in Anacosta, in in D.C.? Yeah. At three tables. How, how did he How did he end up getting that? Did he buy it, or did he beat somebody out of it, or what? I 
I guess he rented it. That's before my time. That's is when it? he lived with Lucy. Okay. Okay. Because it seems like an awful small pool room, three tables. Yeah, but it, uh, the location was good. Uh, so when did you when did you move to Dowell? I lived in Dowell all my life. That's where okay. my parents were. Okay. So my parents were uh, from this area. So did he now? I read someplace that he had moved to Dowell, or he had moved this area because of the tournament. No, he no. came years before the tournament. Do you know what year the tournament started at Jansko's? Do you remember? Because I remember when it ended. It, I was there when they raided, the Treasury Department raided, and I think it was 71. Oh, what do you mean? I was there when they brought out these Manila folders and told the players to put your money in the folder. Uh, really? I had forgotten. Lay it on the table and they put them in this folder and they wrote down like a name or whatever and the amount and that's what happened to your money. They take it all? Yeah. And Anything you had it? on you. Anything you had on you. And they kept it? Yeah. Is that right? I remember talking to uh, to uh, Jimmy Rimpy and, and he had he had happened to just take all his money out of his pocket and put it somewhere else and he had just like some walking money and he didn't get none. But I just, but you don't remember when it started? Uh, no. Okay. So when did he first, now you, that house in Dow, the one your mother's was, when did he first live there with you? Do you remember what year that was? No, I don't because uh, uh, the first years we were married, I went with him every time the car backed out of the driveway, I was in it. And we went to New York, we went to Florida, we went to California, we went to Texas. Yeah. Every place, crisscross, crisscross. And uh, did you follow the the time of year, like you know, in the south in the winter, in the north no, in the summer? Or is it just uh, kind of where the money went? They learn all this <clears throat> that there's action through the grapevine. Those right. hustlers call back and forth. We on tape now. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk back and forth every little bit, and. Uh, if there's any good information, why that word spreads. There's action in oh, yeah. Fort Worth. Oh, yeah. And uh, away they go. Yeah, I know players, when they had a bad day, they go play somebody and they show them how they play them, and they wait to have a good day, they fly there and yeah. play them and, and take right. it off. Okay. So there's was, action in Newark. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that was, yeah, that's the grapevine is, is, I remember that. It was uh, pretty active back then. So, when you were living in the house in Dow, roughly what year was that? <coughs> when we called it home, yeah, uh, was uh, well, it was redone. It took all one summer. They started on it in April. That's when they built the pool room on the had the pool room out of the house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, enlarged the house to accommodate this big table. What kind of table was it? Do you remember? Uh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, fence worked for an equipment company out of Chicago. Right. I remember he used to have his own stores. Right. Uh, and I can't think of the name of it. Uh, it wasn't Brunswick, was it? No. Would be a competitor. Yeah, Murray or Olhausen or Schmidt or okay, but he had a he had a table in the house. Right. Was it a, a real nine, fancy uh, one? Uh, like a six-legged table. Nine by ten. Uh, not nine, nine by ten. Nine five by, by ten. Nine and a half by. Four and a half by nine. Four and a half by nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what they all played on. Yeah, that's professional. Right. And what kind of? Do you remember what kind of cue he used back then? Ah. Uh, do you know? He. Had all kinds of cues. They sold cues and uh, made especially for this company he worked for. Uh -huh. They were made in uh, Carmine, Illinois, over here. But, but you know, uh, was it a fans had a cue that he had had for years, made by uh, an old man, I think from Chicago. Uh, had made three or four cues for Fats through his lifetime. Was it Rambo? Rambo. Was it? Okay. Rambo. And he wouldn't shoot a game, a uh, big important game, without his personal cue. Yeah, I had a friend of mine, I remember in like 1964, bought a brand new Rambo, one of the real fancy ones, 
from him, he paid eighty dollars for it. It was like the, the most expensive cue he had at the time. Uh, and uh, well, beautiful cue though. Yeah. It really was. And did he do his like his own work on his cues? Did he like when he needed a tip? Did he do his own tip? Oh and, yeah. And he he did it in a professional way, you wouldn't believe. And he would uh he was a perfectionist. He would uh, find two Q-tips. Uh, players all carry Q-tips. Right. And uh, they trade. And it's a big deal when you trade. Oh, yeah. So uh, he'd find two or three Q-tips that he liked, maybe in a store or no telling where, trading for Sounds like me. Way. I go through a box and find one or two I liked. Right, and yeah. uh, he carried those in his pocket, and every once in a while, he would uh, spill on them. He'd take it, maybe put it to his tongue, mm -hmm. and just barely moisten it, or he put his finger and moisten that Q-tip, and that was to cure it, and uh, just handling it with uh, perspiration you might have on your mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. Cured that, and he carried them for months before he put them on a queue. Mm -hmm. And where did he learn that from? Oh, I don't know. That's okay, his own idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think of a lot of different things when you get that high level. It's interesting. How about? And he always had what, like one queue and two shafts, one button, two shafts. Okay. And uh, do you know what kind of case he, he used to use or not? Uh, no. No. Because he had uh, opportunity to uh, have any kind of case he wanted. Yeah. Uh, because he traveled so much, he knew where these leather goods shops were, and uh, and if there was something about the case he was carrying that he didn't like, he'd go buy a new one. What? And change maybe change yeah. uh, every two or three years for some reason or other. Yeah. What? What year? Okay, what year did he? Uh, what were the years he played his best pool? Do you remember? Well, About what age? What, we age, were what married, age was he? Married in '41. Uh -huh, before the war. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, now, he didn't go to the war, did he? No, he was inducted. Oh, that's a funny story. It's a story all of its own, and. Uh, doesn't fit in with this pool story at all, yeah. but I tell you, it's a hair raiser. Now, did the man did the man smoke cigarettes? I don't ever remember him no, smoking. No, he never smoked. or drank. Huh. Uh, Fats and I had been married for years, and uh, we had my mother with us in New York City. What year was that? Well, sometime, well, Fats and I hadn't been married too many years. Okay. We married in 41. So I'd say we had been married two or three years. And we took my mother to visit New York City to, and to visit his mother. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, I don't know what we were doing at the Wellington Hotel. That's an old hotel. And it probably has been torn down for years. Anyway, for some reason we were there and we walked on to an elevator and there was a man on this elevator and he said uh, to Fats, says, hello, says, I know you. And Fats says, you do? From where? And the man says, from Jefferson Barracks in St. Louis. And that's where France went for induction. And uh, so when he told that, when he said that, that tickled France, and the man was tickled to death, uh, at, he didn't go over the whole story, but they talked a few minutes, and France had already told me the story about this induction center, about. Uh, how cold it was, and uh, as soon as they all got there, uh, they said, take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, let these other fools take their clothes off. Says, I'm cold, I'm keeping mine off, I'll pull them off when I 
get ready to be examined. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing that happened, he was behind a big, tall man, a real big man, and he had, this man had uh, all kinds of uh, breaking out on his back. And uh, so they told him, uh, everybody in front of that, uh, as they came down the line, they'd have him lie down on a table for examination. And uh, so this big man lay on this table and he was examined and they told him to get up and move and told Fats to lay down. And Fats says, change your sheet. And they said, lay down on the table. He said, if you want me to lay down there, uh, you'll have to change that sheet. I'm not going to lay down there after that man. So I guess they changed it anyway. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, he caused so much confusion and everything that they blacklisted him right there. Uh, <laughs> they, they didn't induct him and didn't try to very much longer because everything they tried to do with him, he was contrary and gave him the argument. So they just blacklisted him. They didn't need that, huh? No. Well, that's good. Well, he was smarter than the average bear, as they say, yeah, for yeah. sure. Who, who were his close friends? Fats' close friends. Did he have any real close friends? I was probably his only one. Really? Okay. Okay. Uh, lots of people liked him. Yeah, but I mean but close friends like in town here or... He or, didn't paddle around, no. No? Now, in cities, uh, around the pool rooms and places like yeah, that... Yeah, I know were, what kind of friends those are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Do you know where he learned to play and at what age he started playing? I'm real young, just as young as could be. When he uh, was a little bitty boy, he used to go with his dad. His dad was a drinker. Three and four years old then, huh, probably? Yeah. Huh? Okay, all right. And, uh, and that was in New York City then? Yeah, and the old man was always in and out of bars, and Fats went with him. And while his dad stood at the bar and drank uh, boiler makers, he'd have a shot of... Uh, Whiskey. booze yeah. and chase it with a beer and Fats went to the lunch counter uh, in uh, those days everybody had free lunch table and uh, <laughs> free so, food is probably years it's probably years lit up didn't they when you heard that right. and, uh, 